Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Proverbs 31 Ministries Morning Show. We are so glad that you are here with us and I hope you're enjoying your June. I am Ashley and I'm here with my co-host and friend, Nicole. Nicole, how are you? I'm good, Ashley. I can't believe we're nearing the end of June. No. It's flying by. It I want to know how has your summer been? So far, it's been good. It's been super hot. Yes, yeah. so hot. <laughs> super hot. Um, but we have a neighborhood pool and so I'm taking the kids there and the kids are actually leaving for camp in a few days. Oh. So they're super excited. I'm a little nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you? I haven't had a super exciting summer, honestly, but I have a few trips planned. So I'm so excited. Oh, good. That'll be so much yes. fun to look forward to. Well, today we're going to talk about something a little bit harder, a little bit of a heavier topic, but I think it's so important to have conversations around this, and that's how to start healing even when we're still hurting. Yeah, um, I immediately think of when I think of pain and all of that. For some reason, I go straight to my kids because, mm. of course, you know, as a mom, we don't want our kids to be in pain, yeah. but there are moments like my kids were really bad at this and you guys can let me know if you've experienced this as well but when my kids were a little bit smaller they would be eating something and they would either bite their fingers or they would bite their tongue or their mm -hmm. cheek and they would scream because it was all encompassing to them yeah and i for sure thought their arm had fallen off <laughs> i was i would run like oh, yeah um and while that's a silly example i think when it comes to pain in our lives it really can feel like no matter what it is relational spiritual yeah. physical it can become all consuming and it just hurts so bad have you ever had an experience like that yeah absolutely and i think you know i just want to I feel like it needs to be said that sometimes the things we need to heal from the big kind of pain points yeah. in our life aren't big tragedies. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes they think it's, um, it could be the like loneliness of being in a new city, not knowing anyone, being away from your family could be hurt and disappointment from a big blowout fight with your friend, mm -hmm. or maybe just another day waiting for something that your heart really desires. Yeah. Um, but I also think it could be a tragedy. I, my family went through something really hard um, in the last few years mm -hmm. where a family member of ours really struggled with depression. Um, and unfortunately they attempted to harm mm -hmm. themselves and that really shook my family. And it was a really hard time. It was a journey, it still is a journey right. of you know heartache, sorrow, new, just dynamics and a lot of things that is very new. Mm -hmm. um, and during all of this, I think we have questions that play in our minds, right? Is this going to last forever? Am I going to feel like this forever? Am I going to be healed and whole ever? Or maybe you were hurt by someone and you think, will I ever feel differently towards that person? Am I ever going to be able to forgive them? Yeah. And I think like that. For me too, I immediately think of this, you know, time or season in my life when there was someone that had really hurt me mm -hmm. and it was hard because they did not see yeah. that they had hurt me as almost like they're, they were just get over it. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And that's something that I think sometimes we struggle with is like, we tell ourselves to get over it. And, but when someone has sometimes hurt us, I felt entitled mm -hmm. to that pain, you know, For it was sure. like. I felt like it was a betrayal to my own feelings or to myself to, to like want to get past that because yeah. it was like I was owed it or something yeah, like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I, even though it was hurting me, mm -hmm. I, it was hard for me to figure out, okay, how do I move on from this? Um, how can I let this go? And most of us, we want healing um, and we want it to be neat and predictable. We yeah. want it to be like a checklist that we can go through. Yeah. And it's not, it's not like that. And we don't want to get caught off guard by the emotions mm, that yes. can come with trying to heal. Yeah, that's so true. I think of like the stages of grief, right? But even those things that they're not linear and no, they're, right. they don't end, you know, right. like you can go through those stages of grief multiple times in your life. And sometimes I wish that healing 
had stages and they were linear. And once you went through all the stages, you're yeah, healed. Yeah. You did it. <laughs> that would be great. Oh, really. <laughs> man. But I think we all know that it doesn't work like that. Um, and I just want to encourage you that all these emotions that are building up and spilling out as frustrating as that can be sometimes, it means that we're not dead inside. That's so true. And yeah. while feelings shouldn't be dictators of our lives and how we live, and we discussed this last right. show, actually, right. they are indicators of what still needs to be worked through. Mm, that's really good. Yeah, I, um, I think like what is an indicator of why it hurts so much mm. is because we love so much, yeah. you know? And I think a lot of times for me, it's that we can actually, ha we have to learn to trust God yeah. with those feelings and emotions and with the healing. Yeah. And we, even though we can't rush the process, that doesn't mean we don't try. Yeah. And it is scary. It's scary to try, but we can let it ebb and flow around us and through us and let the Lord have access to our hearts. Mm -hmm. So what is one thing that we can really start working on towards that healing? Well, I think a great place to start is to try and attach our hope to the safest place we can, and that is Jesus. Mm. I think it sounds so simple, and it sounds so yeah. like, yeah, that is the right answer. Um, but it's hard, especially when you've been wronged by someone, or you just feel like you've been wronged by life. It's just mm. challenge after challenge, yeah. um, and it's just going to take a lot of boldness and trust for us to do that. Honestly, yeah, I think yeah. it will grow you in ways that you couldn't even have imagined. Mm -hmm. But I just think, you know, what if we stopped waiting for things to feel right and fair and waited for that to begin our healing, but instead mm -hmm. just placed our healing in the hands of Jesus instead. Yeah. And you know what, <laughs> honestly, like my first reaction is like, <laughs> Yeah. Like, because I love justice. Yes. And when we feel like our pain is coming from something that's been done to us, rather, like, we get ourselves yes. in situations that are painful for sure. Right. But sometimes we're in painful situations that have, like, happened to us. Yeah. You didn't deserve it. Exactly. And it feels like, you know, do can I really trust the Lord mm. before it's healed? Because I wanted to kind of be like, you handled this show yeah. me the outcome. And then I'll think about working on my healing, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's messy and, and chaotic. Yeah. And the Lord still asks us to kind of come and meet him in the middle yeah. of that. And what I found is that it's not like when we're like trusting the Lord through this process, it's not a one and done yeah. situation. Unfortunately, I wish, <laughs> I wish it worked that way. But I, I think there's a quote that says something like, you know, we have to rely on the Lord today as though we've never done it before. Yeah. And so that is it just showing up one day at a time. I yeah. Think. yeah. And you know, we have all your comments here pulled up in front of us and we like to see what you guys are all saying. Yes. So if there's at any point you're like, yes, this is me. I totally relate. We just drop a heart in the comments so we mm -hmm. can see and go back later and pray for you. Cause we understand that this yes. is something that is universal. Yeah. Um, but it's really hard for each of us in different ways. Mm -hmm. But Ashley, I think that's so true mm -hmm. what you said. And I think when we find ourselves in a spot, you know, that we're struggling with this, especially in relationship where the other person has hurt us, yeah. um, or maybe they don't want to move towards anything healthy. We really have to remember that we can't work harder on someone else's healing than they are. Wow. And I think that's hard that's you know really like hard. it's like yeah. I want to just pause there I want to say it again we can't work harder on someone else's healing than they are and mm. as women we want to help the people we love totally. as much as we can as much as mm. we have in our power mm. um but we have to remember that our healing is our choice and their healing is their choice so true and good well what is another way we can move towards healing so I think another thing is differentiating between what is news mm. and what is truth. Mm. And, um, this is, can be kind of a huge deal because we can look at something in our current circumstances and it is looking bad. Yeah. It's not looking hopeful or any of that, yeah. but 
is it the word of God? Is it true? And that God's word always trumps even our circumstances. And so many of us are faced with impossible situations, but I like to remind myself that actually every miracle in the Bible started as an impossible situation. So sometimes we have to like, just stir up our faith and Mm -hmm. say, Lord, even in this, your word is true. Oh man, that's so good. And I would love to just speak God's word over Mm -hmm. us right now. I want to read two verses. Um, We'll put these in the comments for you. So don't worry about grabbing a pen, paper really quick. Um, The first one is Isaiah 41 10. It says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The second is Romans 8 31. And it says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I think a really powerful thing we can do is write these verses down and place them all around us. When we're tempted to believe Mm. news, we can speak God's truth over ourselves. That's, that's really good. And it reminds me of this example in my life is there was one particular season. The news was not good. Yeah. (laughs) The news was good was bad. I, we had two little kids. Yeah. Um, I had a major knee injury, couldn't walk, but had an infant. Yeah. So that doesn't really oh, work out man. with carrying them. Um, and then my husband lost his job mm-hmm. and, um, you know, it was like, how are we going to get through this? How are we going to pay for things? And I remember the Lord gave me a Psalm 27, 13. And that says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so I drew that or wrote it on a chalkboard in our house. I underlined, will, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And um, I don't know when it was, I didn't know what, what God was going to do. I didn't know how he was going to get that, get us through that. And I think that it's like good to remember that just because we're holding on to truth doesn't mean we're going to have immediate yeah. answers or immediate, like, I feel completely better and it's fine. It's like, yeah. it's really a, a grasping onto it with desperation that God, this is true. And I don't know when it happened, but I can yeah. totally testify that God did work miracles and has done amazing things. And that that verse has been true and those times after that for my life. Mm, that's so good. I feel like when you said that, it made me think of like, you're declaring this. Totally. You no, know, it's a yeah. choice that every day I'm waking up and I declare that I will see God's goodness That's right. while I'm yeah. on earth. And That's I think right. that is so good and so important because sometimes it is a choice yeah. to be happy. It is a choice oh, to choose healing. And mm. some days we don't want to make That's that so choice. True. So, so I really true. love that. Well, another thing that we can do is embracing the perspective that sorrow and celebration can coexist. Mm. I think that Oh man, it, that's so hard, especially <laughs> when you're walking through something really hard. Sometimes even, even if you do feel happy, mm-hmm. maybe you feel guilty that you feel happy. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can sit with and tend to all the things that need to be healed. But at the same time, we can laugh, we can plan for the future. We can declare this day a glorious day. Mm-hmm. To have both sorrow and celebration is not denial. Right. It's right. deeming life a gift because it is a gift. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt this when everything happened in my family and it just felt like grief kind of had taken over my life for a season, mm-hmm. but God is so good that he still allows us to have joy in the mm-hmm. midst of hard things. And it was hard when I wanted to feel joy and I wanted to laugh, but I sort of, you know, you like pull back a little yeah. bit, you feel guilty yeah. You're like man, I have bigger things to be worrying about. I have bigger things happening in my life, but I just want to encourage you. Like you can still laugh. You can still celebrate, um, a friend's job promotion, even though you feel like you're going through the motions in yours, you can, um, celebrate a baby, uh, in your community group, even though you're waiting to hold yours. Mm -hmm. And, Um, I just think our life can be a graceful combination of beautiful and painful. Mm. We don't have to put either definitive label on what today looks like or feels like. That's really good. And it helps me almost take a deep breath. Mm. I mean, I think sometimes we just were holding like everything so tightly and to be like, 
this is not how it's supposed to be. And a lot of times those painful yeah. seasons, it's not supposed to be yeah. like that, but we can actually do both things and, you know, we can give ourselves a break. Yeah. You know, that sometimes mm-hmm. like there are moments of joy in the middle of that. And I love the idea that they can coexist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think that's why it's so good to remember that healing is a process. Mm. You know, we have days that we're full of faith and we're ready to, you know, do the hard work and heal. Um, But then we also have hard days when we don't want to try and we don't want to work on our healing. And we just, you know, sometimes (laughs) I say, I'm going to be sad today. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to eat junk food and watch (laughs) shows that are numb out. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And I think that's all part of the process, Mm. but every day we can tell God exactly where we are, exactly how we're feeling. And we can ask him for help, for the strength we need for, you know, the money we need for everything that we need, because honestly, we can't do it on our own. Yeah. That's so good. And so true. And I know, (laughs) you know, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I really do try to do it. Yeah. (laughs) I try to do it on my own. And the Lord is like, no girl, (laughs) you're going to need some help, you know, and here's the thing, friends, we all have something, Mm -hmm. you know, it's so important for us to not compare our pains, just like anything else we shouldn't compare because sometimes it is like, well, my pain isn't as big as what, you know, Nicole's is going through. So I shouldn't even feel pain, but it's really, it's painful to us. Just like when my kids bite their cheek, you know, in that moment, that's all that they can think about. It's all consuming. All we know is that it just, it hurts. Mm -hmm. And like we're saying before, it can consume consume us. Um, But we do have hope because of Jesus and because he lives in us, which I am so grateful for. Um, We actually want to share a free resource with you. And it is by Lisa Turkhurst, and it's called Six Ways to Start Healing Even When You're Still Hurting, like the title of the show. And if you know Lisa's story, you know that she's been through, you know, a lot of pain herself. And so this is coming directly from her heart. And we're going to link it for you in the comments so you can download that and work through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, even in this resource, there is some space where you can write some reflections Mm -hmm. and just jot some thoughts down and whatever you know, maybe relate to things she shares, maybe it um, loosely relates to what you're going through. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so helpful to get these things out of our hurting hearts, out of our own minds, and to put put it down and just let the Lord's truth wash Mm -hmm. over them. That's so good. Um, While we don't know what it is that you're currently walking through, what we do know is who our God is. Mm -hmm. He is good. He is faithful. And if you need the reminder today, he loves you. He's for you. And he's not left you in your pain all by yourself. Um, Nicole, would you pray for us and those who are struggling right now? Yeah, I would love to. Lord, um, search our hearts, God. Mm -hmm. Whatever pain we're carrying today, maybe it's fresh or maybe it's pain that we've been carrying with us for a really long time, Lord. I pray that you would reveal to us what needs to be healed and what um, we need to hand over to you. I thank you, Lord, that because of your goodness, sorrow and celebration can exist, Mm -hmm. that we have hope in you, um, even if the world around us is bleak and if even if the news isn't looking good, that you are still the most powerful thing on earth and out, Lord, we just are so thankful for um, you loving us, for you sending your son on the cross, God, and that the way that you are active in our life, that you don't just leave us to figure things out on our own, that we only need to come to you and bring things to you. Mm -hmm. Lord, we love you. We thank you for being such a good father. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we are so glad that you joined us today, and we wanted to let you know that usually we would have another show, which would be like two weeks from today, but because we're having She Speaks at Proverbs 31 Ministries, we're going to not have a show that day, so we want to invite you to come back on 
um, July 28th, yes. <laughs> not the 14th, the 28th. <laughs> uh, and we are going to kind of continue this topic a little bit with um, when God gives you more than you can handle and discuss that. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here, friends. And we will see you next time. Yes. Bye. Thank you.